Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference, brought to you in partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. Before we begin, we have a few basic housekeeping items. We want to bring to your attention an important update regarding the conference schedule. There was an error for the Australian Times for the New York sessions, F and H, on the original schedule. Please visit our website at www.gadmc.org to view the updated and correct schedule. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled, so if you have any questions, please use the Q&A box and we will answer those at the end. This year we have enabled multilingual closed captioning. So if you would like to hear the presentation in another language, please click on the closed caption icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We encourage you to use the hashtag GADMCONF in your posts about the conference on social media to help spread the word. A short evaluation will be made available when you exit the presentation. Your feedback is valuable to us and will help shape the next GADMAC conference. Finally, the recording of this presentation and all other presentations will be available later this year after it has been properly edited. We are privileged to have with us tonight, Cindy and Jeff Campbell, who are the owners of Got a Goat Farm in British Columbia, Canada. They are volunteers with a local animal rescue team who found themselves on the other side in the position of making the decision to evacuate, a small farm's perspective. Cindy and Jeff, all yours. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying uh, thank you for having us here and we're just very honored to be able to present at this conference. So um, uh, just a brief outline of what we're gonna be covering. And I apologize for us if you happen to be seeing our pictures uh, popping in and out. Uh, I think that's something that Zoom is doing when you put two people on the same camera, but hopefully you can pretend that we're here if you're not seeing us both at the same time. Uh, so. We're going to start by introducing who we are, talk a little bit about some of our risk mitigation measures, uh, our evacuation plan, and then what the primary purpose of this particular presentation is, is a kind of a case through which was the Karameus Creek wildfire. So we want to talk a little bit about the timeline um, and what prompted us to actually make the final decision to evacuate. Uh, we had several concerns that were impacting our decision. And we wanted to also um, let people know a little bit about what the resources that were made available during this wildfire were. Uh, as well, uh, we're going to discuss some of the public policy issues, uh, financial assistance that was available at the time. And while we were evacuated, some of the tasks that we were faced with. Uh, from our community, um, we were very honored to be able to have a lot of help from ALERT, who is um, our Animal Lifeline Emergency Response Team Society. It's a local nonprofit uh, animal rescue group, and we're proud to be members of this team for a number of years now. Uh, as well, we had a number of other community members that helped us out. And we wanna kind of summarize with our lessons learned and just a quick summary of the presentation. So, to start off with a little bit about who we are. Um, we're called Got a Goat Farm, and we specialize in raising a number of different breeds of goats. Um, in particular, we focus on miniature silky fainting goats, which are just an amazing, calm, wonderful breed, and a number of different dairy goat breeds as well. Uh, we do raise and sell these goats, and we offer educational tours at our farm, um, kind of like a petting zoo, but in, many ways were very different than just your typical petting zoo. 
We attend community events such as um, going down into uh, the city that's closest to us, as well as several other local towns that invite us to come and bring some of our goats with us. And everybody gets to come and meet us and meet our goats. We also offer goat yoga classes here, which has been a really fun sort of activity. Um, since about 2017, I think we began our first goat yoga classes. And um, we do provide a home for several different rescued animals as well. Even though we're not ourselves a rescue um, because of the uh, involvement that we have with the different uh, local rescues, uh, we've been able to bring several animals to our farm. Uh, where we're located is uh, just outside of a, a city called Penticton, which is in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, the area is actually quite prone to wildfires, but it is a beautiful area. We get a lot of visitors each year. Um, the city itself is about 40,000 people. And uh, what we've been noticing is that the wildfires have been increasing quite a bit over the past several years. Um, as I mentioned, Jeff and I have been involved with a number of local animal rescue or with the uh, local animal rescue team named ALERT, uh, which stands for the Animal Lifeline Emergency Response Team, which is a nonprofit volunteer run organization. Uh, if anyone's interested, I do have links in the presentation so that you can um, read a little bit more about this wonderful group. Uh, our farm in 2022 consisted of about 59 goats. Uh, that group included 33 does, which are the female goats, uh, nine bucklings, which are male uh, kids, which are still with their moms, 14 bucks, which were uh, our breeding boys, and three castrated males. As well, we had five equines, uh, one pot belly pig, 63 chickens, a dog, a couple of cats, and, and ourselves. Uh, was what was here in 2022. Prior to uh, this particular incident, um, we, we actually built our house in 2008 and we moved out to Penticton from Calgary, Alberta in Canada as well. Um, I think we might've been a little bit naive about the number of disaster events that Penticton was actually prone to. We hadn't really faced wildfires or floods or anything in our previous city. But uh, since we've been here, um, in particular since 2014, we faced four separate wildfires. Um, three of them weren't that close, but they were within three to four kilometers of our property. And we've had two floods that we've had to deal with. Um, we also have a, a neighbor that we won't get into a lot of detail about, but they have a very bad habit of burning their, their pasture, which meant that it um, could get out of control, and it often did, which would also impact us, and we would have to rush out in the middle of the day to try and fight that fire ourselves. Um, because of the fires and the floods that we have in our area, we implemented several risk mitigation procedures, and these included, um, we actually have our own little fire truck. I'm just going to back up a slide or two here. There we go. So on this slide, uh, if you notice in the middle picture, this is what we're referring to as our fire truck. Uh, it's something that uh, Jeff actually built, and it's got a about a thousand, thousand liter. liter water container on it. And we've had to put some pumps that we would use to fill it up at the local creek. And we have fire hose that is attached to it. Um, so we've, we've developed that because there is no fire protection in our area. Uh, we've also set up generators so that if there is ever a power outage, we still will have access to our well, which is how we provide water for the farm. And the all the different systems surrounding that uh, are protected with these generators. Um, they are gas powered so that we don't have to worry about, um, like I said, electricity going out. Uh, we had to, for flooding protection, set up some drainage trenches and culverts under our driveway so that um, we weren't directly in the path of floods, which we had been in the past. And we had last year first set up um, fire protection sprinklers and that's what this image is on this slide, which um, are fantastic about 
setting up sort of a water bubble around your property and keeping whatever structure it is that they're attached to protected in the event of a fire. Um, we've been very cautious about the types of plants and the things that are around our property, as well as we've gone through fire smart assessments and um, wanted to make sure that everything was as as good as we can get it in terms of mitigating any risks of future fires. Uh, because of our involvement with ALERT, we actually have been involved in helping others set up evacuation plans, uh, and we've developed our own as well. Um, it was a few years ago where we went through all the details of that because of the number of animals on our farm. Uh, however, we have let that lapse a bit. Um, mostly it's because we've had to deal with a lot of floods and fires and things like that. And so um, COVID in the middle of the mix really did also have an impact as we started to grow out of touch with some of the places and the people that we would have been involved with, uh, places that we would have to take our animals to. Uh, when we think about our evacuation plan, we actually have a number of special considerations and requirements that um, came to mind. And this was really quite apparent when we went through what we did in 2022. Uh, there's, uh, because our, our goats, we have a number of does and bucks here. I know I keep popping out. <laughs> um, we have to keep them separated. Uh, especially our breeding bucks, because they tend to only have one thing on their mind, and we don't want to uh, end up with a lot of uh, impregnated females. Uh, at the time of our evacuation, we had several bucklings that were still with their moms, and we didn't really have a place that we can put them, so we decided to keep them with their moms, even though there was some potential for um, them doing the deed with the other goats. Uh, we have a weather, which is a fixed uh, male, and he is diabetic, and he actually requires daily insulin shots. So we needed to find a place for him that he could be kept with his small herd so that he wasn't um, being picked on by any of the larger bucks that we have. And then we had a rooster group. We had uh, several different groups of chickens, and we have a donkey and a miniature horse that basically required to be together. At the time that all this was taking place last year, the avian influenza was actually of great concern in this area. And we do have some other biosecurity issues, especially with goats. Uh, there are various diseases that they can contract. So we wanna make sure that any place that they go to had not been previously occupied by other goats or that we don't bring other herds in close contact with them. So what happened here um, from a timeline perspective was exactly one year ago today, uh, we were faced with a fire. And there was a wildfire that broke out. In fact, it was, um, it was my day of starting my vacation. And Jeff and I were just about to sit back and relax. And we heard the first helicopter and planes fly overhead of our property. Um, was kind of a scary moment yeah, because we've heard that sound before. It's almost like you have to, you've been through wildfires and you hear all of the helicopters that are bucketing and dropping water on fires or planes that are um, going around spotting fires. It's almost like you have PTSD listening to that because of the constant noise and and you just are just on edge because of it. Um, so at first, uh, they estimated the fire to be approximately 100 hectares. And by that same night, um, they were putting out evacuation orders for properties closest to where the fire started. And they actually included our farm at um, that same evening. And this was actually the first time that we'd ever put, put on evacuation alert. So if you can see in this diagram here, there's a picture of the fire when it had first started and what some of the, the surrounding terrain looks like. Also where the fire was first detected and where our farm was. So all of the properties outlined in red were put on order, which means that they had to leave. Everything that was in yellow was put on evacuation alert. 
and that was us up here. So very, very close to where this fire started. Um, the timeline, everything just continued to balloon up. Um, overnight, the fire was up to 150 hectares. Uh, the next day, it was up to 440 hectares. And then by August 1st, the fire was actually estimated to be at 2,790 hectares. So it was, it was pretty huge. They had 324 properties ordered to evacuate, 479 on alert. On August 3rd, the fire had ballooned up to 4,250 hectares. Um, this picture is probably one of the most impactful from when we were being faced with the decision to evacuate. We had structural protection crews out behind our property and we started to notice these plumes of really thick smoke that were appearing just above the back of the mountain that we sit on. Um, the area in green is where we were putting up tarps around our hay shed. Uh, by August 4th, which was just after we had all of these um, plumes of smoke appear, uh, the alert commander that we had been in contact with recommended that we do evacuate due to the proximity of the fire. So we we finally said, yeah, let's let's do this. We can't wait any longer. Um, when we made the decision to evacuate, there was a number of considerations that we had to take into account. Um, one was finding a suitable location for all of the animals that we had. Um, fortunately, there was one that alert was able to secure for us. However, it did require some cleanup. Um, and we did have a number of alert volunteers and farm friends that helped to come out and do this task. And the alert commander had been in um, all of the different morning briefings with the local uh, regional district. And they continued to let her know that they were thinking about putting us on evacuation order due to the number of animals that we had. But each day, no order was actually made. We were um, we were just sitting here on the edge of our seats, basically. So this is a picture or several pictures of the location that we were going to go to for taking all of the animals. Um, all of these different uh, areas had to be cleaned up significantly because they housed a number of chickens. So there was a quite a few um, bird feces that were everywhere. And we needed to get some help to clean that all up. So again, just a few photos of the area. Uh, because we also have horses and pigs, there were some, some different spots that we had to consider for where the horses could go, where our pig could go. And in this particular area, there would happen to be no chickens that we could bring because they had had a previous outbreak of the avian influenza that I mentioned earlier. Um, at the time that we made our decision to evacuate, uh, these are just a couple of photos of what was going on behind our property and just down the road from us. So we had several concerns that impacted our decision. Um, this was something that as an animal rescuer, you don't really think about these things quite as much as you do when you're the property owner and when you've got your own animals that are being um, the ones that you have to evacuate. We weren't getting a lot of direct information regarding where the fire was positioned and those big plumes of smoke that we were seeing were, were really scary for us. We just didn't know how close that fire actually was. Uh, the reports that we were seeing on the media and from BC Wildfire Service indicated that the fire was growing really fast one day and then all of a sudden um, it would be slow the next day. And then they would tell us that it was ballooning up by several thousand hectares. It was um, really, really challenging to make decisions. And then the information that was being passed on to us from the alert commander, uh, whether or not we were going to be put on an evacuation order, it was, it was, it was tough to go through all of that. Um, one of our big concerns, too, was that our property, uh, if we left, would it be protected? We weren't sure if that was going to be the case, uh, because this was not something that they typically would be doing um, previously. So even though we weren't under order, we actually did make that decision and thought it was in the best interest of all the animals that we had. And because of the number of animals, it was um, important for us to make sure that they were safe. So we started to pack everybody up into trailers. Alert sent up all 
the trailers that they were able to spare. So all of the volunteers came out and in full force started loading up our goats, our horses, our, our chickens. They all had to go to different areas. And so it was quite, quite the effort. It took approximately five hours, I believe. Five hours to get everyone off the yeah, farm. To get everybody off the farm and down to their different areas that they were going to be housed and not knowing how long they were going to be there was the other concern. Okay, um, got some photos here too of the facility that we had to use for milking our goat in the top left corner. Um, we only had fortunately one goat that was being milked at the time and I do hand milk her. So it was something that was going to be a bit of a concern how I was going to get down there and make sure that that she was um, taken care of daily because you can't just stop milking. So by August 5th, uh, the fire had actually grown. There's a little bit of a perimeter map of what the fire was looking like. And by August 8th, we were at almost 7,000 hectares. Every night, Jeff and I would go out for a little drive down the road just to see what was going on because we couldn't really tell from what was going on in the media how close things were. Uh, they had our roads blocked off so that people couldn't enter in and just start looking around. Uh, but because we're in the fire zone, we would drive down, try and stay out of the way of everybody, of course. But um, these are some of the photos that we were taking of what was actually being burned just a few kilometers from us. At the time, this was actually the largest wildfire in the province. It was um, really large. They put a number of resources on it and they brought um, several hundred uh, wildfire firefighters from across BC, um, including 166 structural protection personnel. Uh, we had helicopters and other he heavy equipment that were helping with this fire too. <clears throat> um, we had some great, great times actually with these guys. They were out there working very hard, trying to help us. And um, just love this one photo with our dog and one of our the structural protection people that was there. And we took pictures of some of the different fire um, vehicles that came to help us. They were from all over the area. Uh, some were from several hundred kilometers away that came to help with this fire. Uh, right next door, they had the helicopter landing area, which is what I was saying earlier. The sound of helicopters going across the top of our house was very loud mm -hmm. and constant. We had helicopters from sun up to sundown basically and very um just made the whole house shake every time that they came by as far as the public policy goes uh wildfire fighting procedure in bc had been impacted by a significant wildfire event that happened the year previous to this in 2021 there was a small village called lytton um, which unfortunately was basically totaled. Um, the entire village was wiped off the face of the planet. And there were two civilian fatalities that had happened at the same time. This really severely impacted how fire responses were going to be handled moving forward in this province. Um, our farm was located in a, a area that uh, had no fire protection. So in previous years, we would not have received any assistance. And in this year, we weren't really expecting any assistance. However, during uh, this particular fire, they did a lot to help us out. And they cut a four meter swath for actually two kilometers at the base of the mountain behind us and along not only our property, but all of the neighboring properties. They set up sprinkler lines in behind there, bladder systems at the road, uh, that allowed for water access. And then if people didn't have their own rooftop sprinklers, they set these up on different structures. Uh, even though this information uh, came to us from the, the fire crews, it was really unfortunate that it was not communicated publicly because this would have maybe made decisions a little bit easier for people to evacuate and leave their property. So just a few pictures of some of what was going on. Um, behind our house with the fire protection lines. Uh, we also found out that there was financial assistance available through the Ministry of Agriculture because we were registered with a government premises ID program. Uh, it didn't come directly to us, but it did help 
to be able to allow for uh, any of the people that were helping transport our animals or for housing our animals, they were able to submit claims. So while we were evacuated, we actually visited our animals twice daily. We did milking, feeding, cleaning pens. Um, it, we found a lot of information in the news for the first few days, but as days drew on, so there was really not a lot of information being provided. So it made it very challenging for us to know when we could bring our animals home. Um, by August 19th of last year, we finally did make the decision that things seemed to be um, under control enough that we could bring our animals home. Uh, by August 23rd, the regional district had rescinded the evacuation alert that we had for our property. And what they did do though, however, was they kept a blockade in place on our road that prevented anyone from accessing uh, any properties unless you actually lived in the area for the next month or so. Um, without community involvement, we would have really been stuck. Um, we were so fortunate that we had the assistance from the Animal Lifeline Emergency Response Team. Uh, they sent up volunteers to help load and trailer almost all of our goats, pigs, horses, and our other large animals. Um, and they helped to secure the location for every, where everyone was going. Um, they also came out to help with cleaning some of the pens and doing other tasks for us too. Um, within our community, we had a lot of people that support uh, what we do. And so we were just so overwhelmed by all of the support that we got. So uh, we did find places for our chickens to go for our special needs goat with diabetes to go. And we even had um, a senior's home showed up with a bus that allowed us to, uh, we ended up putting some chickens in there, but they said, put all the goats in and didn't even have any concern for their bus being chewed up by goats. Um, so it was, it was just overwhelming and very humbling that we had so many people that were on our side here. So in terms of lessons learned, um, it was really stressful, as you could probably very tell stressful by how even just reliving this, going through this again, it, it from an animal evacuator to an evacuee, it's there's it's night and day. It's very, very different. we We felt like we were always in control when we were helping others, but when you are the person that is on the receiving end and having to actually perform an evacuation of your own property and your own animals, it's really hard to even keep your mind thinking straight. We had a lot of people asking us what they should be doing, where they should go. And it was hard to try and direct that. Um, when coordinating the evacuation efforts um, here, it's, it seemed totally chaotic, but in the end, it actually went pretty smooth and we were really happy that we were able to get the animals out. Um, one of the biggest challenges though, was finding a place for them to all go and uh, how they would get there. And so, like I said, without the help from Alert, we would have really been stuck. And I can't say enough good things about this group. They're, they are a volunteer run organization. They don't get any government funding. And it's something that we really need to um, be able to acknowledge the role that they play in our community. A few other lessons learned as well as um, maintaining biosecurity can be really challenging. Uh, and in many cases, farms are very susceptible to picking up diseases that could affect their entire herds and their livelihood can be significantly affected. Uh, we, for us, we had to keep our males and female animals separated because we do breed them. Um, but sometimes that isn't possible. As I mentioned earlier, we kept some of our little, little boys with their moms. And in the end, we were quite fortunate. We ended up with only one unplanned pregnancy, a sweet little baby goat who was born in January of this year. Um, and then there's some different things such as planning uh, how you're going to continue on with your day-to-day -day activities. Like for us around the farm, things like milking, egg collection, caring for our special needs animals. These are all things that we had to, to plan out carefully. Um, I guess if anything, we would like to stress that being able to get regular communication from our local authorities would have 
would have helped us a lot just in easing our mind and our stress level um, about where the exact fire position was, what their thoughts were from an evacuation standpoint, when we should be able to move back. Um, because they seem to kind of be good at communicating for a short period of time, but then not so much afterward. So again, from an evacuee standpoint, that was a big stress point for us. Uh, and then we found too, that it was really challenging to keep up to date with evacuation plans. It's great for us to, as um, animal rescue personnel to help others get those evacuation plans in order, but things change so fast. And if you've got a large number of animals, uh, this is something that you have to set aside time for. And we, we certainly found that we fell short too. So this was just when we brought some of the animals home. Um, we've got our big pot belly pig, a few of our horses. And unfortunately, where some of the boy goats were kept, there was a lot of greasy areas. And so you can see that um, this little guy on the left there, his face used to be white <laughs> and it was quite, quite black after being part of that um, location. So I guess just to summarize, um, we were just a small farm and we were impacted by this wildfire in 2022. And even though we've worked with an animal rescue organization for several years, um, being the ones facing evacuation was very much more stressful than what you would expect. Uh, we tried to look at this from the presentation of, or from the presenting the timeline of what actually um, we were facing with this wildfire and what prompted us to make final decisions to evacuate our farm. And Thank you so much. Oh, I, I'm sorry, we're just nearly out of time. So we'll leave that up on the screen for everyone to see. Did we have any questions for Cindy and Jeff? We don't, I don't see any in the Q&A box, but this is such a valuable perspective um, to, you know, even though you've, you've volunteered with the team for so many years to be on the other side of it, really, it does put just a whole new perspective to it. Very, very different, honestly. Yeah. And it was, as Cindy mentioned, it was extremely stressful. And by the time we got all the animals off the farm, um, it was, it was extremely emotional. Yeah, totally. Wonderful. We do have one question. Does alert utilize a membership model in helping, or do they offer support in the order received according to available resources? Curious how they were able to accommodate presumed needs of multiple farms in terms of planning, particularly with concern for housing animals. Seems like an amazing group. Yeah, they, they really are an amazing group. And uh, when people are faced with having to evacuate, they contact alert and the commander there is, is just fantastic for scheduling um, when and how those resources are going to be allocated to assist with any types of evacuations. We try and make sure that we're aware of what is needed in the community, which means going out and assessing how many farms might need some assistance, how many um, just regular households would have cats or dogs that may need assistance. And, and it's just a matter of coordinating around everything that we can anticipate. So, so they made, uh, they, we do have some facilities that Alert has uh, access to where we're able to house like cats and dogs. Um, there's a local horse racetrack that has offered up some of their stables and stuff like that. And especially during wildfire season here yeah. and as well, the place where we ended up taking our goats to, uh, he would like to actually, uh, he's definitely involved with us and, and continues to share his property. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for presenting with us. 